what's up guys this is weasel for pokerweasel.com i'm here with the death star hud this is going to be a quick tutorial on using the next action feature of the pop-ups within hand to note now sometimes when using the death star you might be looking for a specific stat but you don't know where that stat is but you do know where there's a related stat that happens just before the stat you're looking for you can use the next action feature of the hand to note pop-ups to ascertain the value that you're looking for Let's see an example of how this works. So let's imagine what we have on the screen right now is a pop-up on our opponent. It's for flop cbet OOP. And let's bring up the pop-up over that specific stat. We can see flop cbet OOP is 47. Let's have a look at the pop-up. I'd like to focus your attention to the part where it says next actions at the top. Also, we'll discuss where it says next villain actions in that dotted yellow box. But let's start with next actions. So imagine our opponent c-bets OOP. The first three stats here are what happens if he gets raised. So if he faces an aggressive action on the current street, is he going to fold, cool, or raise? For example, perhaps we don't know in the pop-ups where the stat is fold c-bet to raise, but since we have a related stat, i.e. c-bet flop OOP, we can see that this player folds 64% of the time when facing a raise. Now it's not very hard to find the fold c-bet to raise stat. You can actually see that it's pretty easy to find it on this pop-up. Fold c-bet to raise OOP on the flop 64. So we can see those two values add up. This player folds to a raise 32% and he 3-bets 4.8% of the time. I don't have 3-bet information on this pop-up. And I've even had questions from players. Where is the 3-bet information? I need to know how much my opponent's 3-betting the flop. Well, if you understand how to use your pop-ups well, you don't need to find that information in the pop-up anyway. You can look here. You know that this play is going to be 3-betting the flop 4.8% of the time if we raise continuation bet out of position. Let's look at the next part there. We have B, X, and two numbers. Now, this applies to the next street. So this is assuming that we don't raise his C-bet, and we instead just call his C-bet. This is how often this player will be barreling the turn, 59%. And this is how often he'll be skipping his turn barrel, 41%. Again, we can verify that by having a look at the information on the pop-up. We can see that this player c-bets the turn out of position, 59%. That correlates precisely with the stat we have in the pop-up on the right. The interesting thing here is that these are two different stats. Although they show the same thing, they're generated in different ways. The stat on the right is automatically generated by hand to note. The stat on the left, I've coded as part of the Death Star HUD. It's good to notice that these values align with each other. Sometimes you might find that the stats are calculated slightly differently depending on the criteria for the stats I've coded. You might see a few percent discrepancy, but we can see in this particular instance, the stats are lining up perfectly. We know that this player will definitely see about the turn 59% OOP after we call his flop c-bet. Let's now have a look at next villain actions. Now in order to unlock this feature you do need an edge subscription. And the reason why this is the case is because this is essentially a population analysis tool. So in the context of us looking at villains HUD, when it says next villain actions it's actually talking about us, assuming we're hero. So it depends on whose pop-up you're looking at. If we're looking at our own pop-ups for the sake of self-analysis, then when it says next villain actions, it's talking about villain. Whereas in this context, because we're looking at villain's HUD, when it says next villain action, it's talking about us, assuming that we are the opponent in the hand. So essentially what this means is, when this player who we're analyzing c-bets, how often is his opponent folding over the sample size? In other words, this first stat here of 40 is essentially a c-bet success stat. Now it's interesting to note that there aren't any c-bet success stats in the main part of the pop-ups, but that doesn't mean the stat doesn't exist. So an important lesson to learn from this is that although there's seven or 8,000 stats currently within the main hand to note pop-ups, this HUD is absolutely not limited to seven or 8,000 stats. And that's because for every stat that I've coded, hand to note has automatically generated a range of related stats. And it's not just the ones we've looked at, you can also see that there are some one hand went to showdown and one at showdown after taking this line. So for example, when it says went to showdown 19, 
This is how often the player reaches showdown after c-betting the flop OOP. So let's imagine we wanted to know our own c-bet success frequency. Well, one thing we could do is we could run range research and see how often the population falls to c-bets. However, just because the population falls a certain amount to c-bets doesn't necessarily guarantee that that's our c-bet success frequency. After all, perhaps the population folds less or more frequently against us based on our c-bet stat. If we want to specifically know how often our c-bets are working against the population, we can bring up the pop-up on our cells for this specific stat, i.e. c-bet flop OOP in this case, have a look at next villain actions provided we have an edge subscription, and this is our c-bet success frequency against the population, which could be different from the overall fall to c-bet stat that we find in the range research population analysis tool. Depending on the exact stat that we're looking at, the automatically generated pop-up will show some auto-generated stats, but won't necessarily show others. For example, in this case where it says next villain actions, we have fold, call, and raise. You can see next street, we don't actually have any automatically generated stats. So there's certain rules that Hantonote follows. So in this case, it's impossible for the next actions to be bet or check because this player is facing a bet. So he has to either fold, call, or raise. It's impossible for his very next action to either be bet or check. The easiest way to get a better understanding of how this works is to have a look at another pop-up. Let's have a look at the auto-generated pop-up for call cbet OOP. Now in this case, we can see that Villain has been assigned some next actions. We can see that he is donking 1.2% of the time on the turn and he is checking the remaining 98.8% of the time presumably although it's rounded up to 99. So if you think about this in the context of calling a c-bet out of position now it's impossible for our very next actions to either be fold, call or raise. We can't just analyze these stats for when villain barrels a turn because if villain barrels a turn that implies we've already checked. So you can see in this case, fold, call, and raise are impossible for our next actions. Therefore, hand to hasn't calculated anything. Our next actions have to be either bet or check in this case. So as first to act out of position on the turn, this is how often this player donk bets. And the next stat is how often he checks. If we jump on over to the fold to c-bet in position and have a look at the auto-generated pop-up for call c-bet in position, we can see that all five of those stats are generated there. And all of those stats are for the next street. So assuming villain calls a flop c-bet in position, how often does he fold to a barrel on the turn? So we have fold, call, and raise. Again, we can confirm these stats by having a look at the main coded stats in the left-hand pop-up. So for example, fold to turn barrel after call flop c-bet, you can see 44, so that matches up. Raise against turn barrel, you can see that a little bit lower in the left-hand pop-up, 9.8. So you can see everything checks out there. As for this bet and check auto-generated stats, 83 and 17, this is actually going to refer to float bet turn and skip float bet. And again, you can confirm that by looking at the pop-up on the left. So float bet turn, you can see, is 83%. So obviously, skip float bet has to be by default 17. Now, if we imagine for a minute that this is our pop-up, we might be interested in how often we face a turn barrel after calling a flop c-bet in position. We'd obviously do that by looking at next villain actions and we can see that in terms of the bet and check stats there, 57 is bet, 43 is check. In other words, when we call a flop c-bet in position, we're going to face a turn barrel 57% of the time if we assumed this was our pop-up. So again, you don't have to purely rely on population analysis. That's the other way you could get this number, run the population analysis, see how often the entire population barrels the turn against everyone. But if you think people are barreling against you more or against you less, you can come here and see how often the population is betting against you specifically. So it's a type of versus hero stat across the population. So it combines range research and versus hero information. I think you probably get the idea. Let's just look at one more stat. We're just going to return to this cool CBET OOP. We're going to have a look at next villain actions and just interpret what they mean. So we already had a look at the next actions at the top. We'll now have a look at next villain actions. 
if we start with those bet and check stats, because those are the simplest, we have 48 and 52. This is basically going to be villains barreling tendencies. So if we assume that we're looking at our pop-up right now, we've just called a flop c-bet, OOP. We check the turn. This is how often our opponent is going to barrel, 48% of the time. Now let's have a look at those first three stats, fold, call, and raise. Well, when would our opponent's next option be to either fold, call, or raise? This would imply that we were donk betting the turn. This must be how our opponent is playing against a donk bet. Again, assuming that this is our pop-up. If this was villain's pop-up, we should think of these as his success frequencies when he donk bets the turn, OOP. So imagine it's our pop-up and we decide to donk bet the turn. This is how often our opponent on average is folding, calling, or raising against that turn donk bet. You can see 26% folds, 47% calls, and 26% raises. Now, of course, do we actually think that villains are raising turn donks 26% of the time? Probably not. Keep in mind that this is the type of stat that generates a sample size slower than other stats. And that's because it's somewhat unorthodox to donk bet the turn. It does happen, but less often than various other lines that are taken. So it could be that this particular stat is suffering from variance. Either way, the important thing is that you understand what these stats represent. And if you can use these stats effectively, it's going to greatly augment the number of stats you have at your disposal and also your access speed. Because now you have more than one way to access the same stat. So if you know the stat you're looking for is a long way away in one of the other pop-ups, but you can just hover over a related stat and pick up the auto-generated information, then you may as well do that and save yourself time mid-hand. Not to mention that I haven't necessarily coded an equivalent for every single auto-generated stat. So when you add in the auto-generated stats, we're not talking about eight or 9,000 stats in the pop-ups. We're talking about 50,000 plus stats at your disposal, thanks to this built-in ability of hand to note to auto-generate related stats for the stats that we code. So next time you think that a stat is missing from the HUD, before you message me to say, hey, why don't you add a 3-bet flop stat, for example? Before you do that, think about whether it would appear in any of the auto-generated pop-ups from hand to note because the chances are it will, and you can get access to some very obscure stats, which we probably don't want to spend our time coding, but they're going to be there anyway. And besides, why code a certain stat if you know for certain that it's auto-generated by hand to note? So just keep that in mind, just because I haven't explicitly coded a stat doesn't mean I've necessarily overlooked it. In some cases I've said, okay, I'm not going to waste my time coding these stats because they're definitely there in the auto-generated pop-ups. They're very clear and easy to use if you know where you're looking. And at this stage, I would say probably the majority of hand-to-note users have not unlocked this simple feature of hand-to-note. They don't know what the next actions mean. They get the concept, they're showing us what Villain does next, but notice how we've broken it down in this video and we figured out exactly which each stat means. So once we've done that practice, it's going to be easier to interpret those stats mid-game. And that's the missing link for many players. You just have to sit down, look at those stats, figure out what they mean, then you'll be able to use them efficiently when you're playing at the tables. All right, hopefully this helps to improve the efficiency of your HUD usage. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hope you continue to enjoy the Death Star HUD. This was Weasel for PokerWeasel.com.